So that's about it for this evening. But if any of you have any questions for your, this cast, please, please put up your hands because come and sit at the entrance stage, guys. Um, I've spent two weeks with them and they're just some of the most amazing young people on the planet. So please, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask, do go ahead. What's the best thing you guys have learned from this experience? I think for me, the best thing that I learned from the experience is, I mean, I've had the opportunity to work with like an amazing cast from different, from different corners of the world, and I've been able to be um, privy to their various cultures. And so to understand, um, to get a clear understanding of maybe something that's happening in Syria, or to understand, I mean, the educational system in Canada, it was a really great experience from that end. For me, uh, first of all, it was a great honor to sing in the UN. And um, I, to, in order to, to uh, let people listen to what you believe in, you have to speak up. So what I learned from this experience is to speak up for what I believe in. Thank you. First of all, I'm most, most, most impressed. And music brings you straight back to your heart. At least that's happening to me. Um, what are the major changes that you have discovered in yourself before and after the experience of the participation in this big event? in general and how people differ from their cultural upbringing but then also how they can be just as a human being and how we all share a similarity in that way so in a sense that's what I've taken away that I've got a really broad understanding of that now I feel Michael. Now, one thing I've learned from this entire event and I can take away with me and the changes that's been rooted and made through this event has been working with this amazing wonderful cast and the choir members tirelessly, everyone being humble and you know, not trying to show up where they're from or what they have back home or where anything. Those of us from Africa, those of us from around the world, it's been an amazing experience because I, I've learned to be able to humble myself and work with these people. And it's great to see how humble they can be as well. And I've learned to be more humble and actually work with people from around the world has been a life changing experience for me personally. I think, for me, um, I agree totally with what everybody else has said, but I think before the show, I was very lazy. Not, not like in day to day, but like how I reacted to news, to what was happening, current affairs. It was like, it was, I was very separated from it. And in a way, meeting people from countries that are directly affected by, by things that I see on the news and hearing about people's experiences, and I just feel like, we can't afford to be lazy and unobservant and, and we can't afford to separate ourselves from the rest of the world just because it's not affecting us directly because it is in the end gonna affect everybody. And we should all make it our duty to make sure that everyone around the world is protected and is happy. Right. <laughs> I would just like to ask a question. What has this experience taught you about the United Nations and its work? Well, I am one of the youngest people in the entire production, and I've really learned so much, because being a young teenager, 
and sort of discovering the world, this has been such an amazing experience and an opportunity to understand and discover such things like the UN, how the UN works, and especially where I'm living now is an incredible place for me to discover cultures and discover new people and make new friends and make new connections that I feel incredibly, incredibly lucky to have made. And I really, really cannot describe it in any more words than that, but yeah. Hi, I think it was absolutely wonderful what you put on this evening, and thank you so much. You come from a lot of different countries. You want to influence a billion people is a message I get. How are you going to do it when you get back home? Uh, well, I'm going to go back to Syria on Thursday. Um, I miss everybody there, actually. But uh, what I have, like the message I have been carrying around for since the crisis started two years and a half ago is a peaceful one. And I really want everybody in my country to love each other again and uh, to be honest I'm gonna try to bring peace with my music with my concerts my songs that I'm gonna be writing and creating I think music is the best way to uh, connect with people in a very uh, emotional way so I think and my message is peace 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 I have a question and the proposal, all together. Would you commit to come back in 10 years and to review if what you predicted is happening? countries. He's from Syria, I'm from Denmark. And um, adding to what was said about laziness, um, I come from a Western country. Um, we are pretty lazy when it comes to international issues. Um, what I would like to bring back to the people of Denmark is uh, engagement and energy and responsibility to take part of what's going on in the world, and not just like people living in Geneva uh, also. Um, are really, um, they live good lives, and so do we in Denmark. And I would like to encourage the people in Denmark to participate in what's going on in the world. I'd like to add to. Um, in reference to your question, um, I think sometimes as, as young people we get overwhelmed by how many issues there are, and there are so many problems that we have to solve. And as a youth activist back in the Bahamas, really, we have to understand that as individuals, we have to do our part. Whether or not it's you deciding that you want to recycle, or you proclaiming a, a message of love within your youth group, it takes every single body within this room to understand that you do play a pivotal role within everything that we do in our everyday lives. Just that small job, nothing really major, just making those small changes. Okay. I would like to say something also. I'm representing Indonesia and Malaysia here. Back in Indonesia, we have like 40,000 islands and uh, like hundreds of different languages. And what I will bring from this experience is the tolerance that all of the cast have been performing, I mean, like, have been showcasing to me that we have to respect differences, no matter what your religions, what language you're speaking, what your color skin, we have to unite if we want to save this earth. And that's what I need to bring to my country. And I'm gonna do... <laughs> I'm gonna do everything I can to bring the love and all the... <clears throat> all the... Uh, Sorry. Yeah, to bring the love and all of this you've been, you guys been showing me. I mean, I learned a lot here. I came here like, I, 
I, I learned a lot. I learned a lot. Thank you so much, guys. Um, I just want to say something about when you asked us what we've learned about the UN. I don't know exactly what I've learned about the UN. Um, it does seem as a very bureaucratic, uh, slow system where <laughs> solutions are not easily made. Um, I just want you to know that people really expect a lot for you, so don't like fail to live up to that responsibility, really. And yeah, fight for for what you believe in, even though you're grown-ups and adults and you, you start to uh, realize how the system works and things maybe work slower, but still, you know, fight and we still believe in you. We will support you. And I'd like to add also that here I'm from Nigeria and also representing Malaysia because I'm in the university there and I look forward to going back to Malaysia as well and also back home in Nigeria and seeing how we can unite the various religions in a way that we can actually see and respect each other as we have come to this event and respected each other through Peace Child and Green Cross and see how we all have worked together in this few weeks and you know, be able to relate the same message back home to Malaysia and Nigeria as well to see how the various religions through music can unite together and put away our differences and be able to unite as one and one family to help the world and United Nations and every, every peace organization that exists in the world. Has this experience taught you some way of entering the mind of somebody you really dislike? Because in the scene where the conscience of the punchy guy um, was broken by, what is the song? Who am I? I, who am I? Asking, who am I? It's terribly important. And I just wondered if that, because there's so many people we don't like and we just want to shout at, has it taught you anything about it? Using song, maybe, using anything to get through to somebody who dislikes so much, who is causing so much trouble. I think um, mostly, what, from what we've seen with I Who Am I, is that you can push and you can shout and you can scratch and whatever else you want to do to try to convince someone, but the change is, it has to be internal. And music, and as we said, music evokes so much emotion, and emotion can lead to to this like cha the change that happens inside. But I don't think, I think to an extent, we have to realize that each person has to to change themselves, and we can't do it for for everyone in this room. It has to become a choice, and you have to come to that choice by yourself. Also. Um just being from so many different cultures and different backgrounds, you'd expect that, well, obviously we'll not all, like, it will not always be in how many we came in, we're not all in how many because we didn't really know each other and it didn't work out right from the start. There were people we didn't like, maybe their mannerisms or different things about them, but I mean, we came here with one purpose and that was the purpose to bring a message of peace and love through song. So over the past two weeks, despite us maybe not liking different things about each other, I think just having that one goal and that one focus has actually brought us together. And now we are like one family and we feel like we can't even be separated. So I know for the next two days, it's going to be very difficult for us. I think to answer the question of how do you deal with someone that you may, not dis you may not like very much, what is the best way to approach it? I think it, the first step is to always kind of put yourself aside and to try and understand where this person's coming from. L look, look at life through his or her eyes and try and understand what is causing this person to think this way, what is, what is actually the, the root of the issue, and starting from that and approaching that person in that way with love and understanding, I think that's, that's the best approach. So, what else is interesting, and this does not completely speak to your question, but if your question reminded me of this, and you give a group of actors a microphone and they just wanna talk. Um, but, you know, so I got here two days late because my plane was canceled, and so the whole group had assembled before I had arrived. And I was nervous to see everybody because you enter a group of people and we're human beings, so we get nervous. 
And, you know, obviously, since they're lovely human beings, everyone was very welcoming and all these things. And I had a great first day getting to know people. Who are you? What's your name? How old are you? These sorts of things. And it wasn't until, like, two days later, when I was Skyping with my parents, um, that I really even, they asked me, like, oh, culturally, you know, has it been difficult getting along with people from different cultures? And that honestly was so secondary in terms of getting to know people. I mean, obviously, we're all from different places. But it really was just, like, getting to know anybody that you would get to know. I mean, I'm from New York City. I get to know people there. I came to Geneva. I get to know people here. So this whole, like, cross-cultural exchange was such an important part of it, but the human element was so primary. Um, so that was a huge learning lesson because I would have thought, you know, I'm going to hang out with people from Nigeria and St. Lucia and Canada and, you know, Indonesia and what would we have in common, but really you have everything in common and all these things, these places that we're from were so much less important. Yeah. So I'm going to bring it back around to the question because we are all human and in any kind of conflict, whether that's with someone or with a nation or with, with policy making, I think it's really important to be rational and calm. And when you're making decisions or you're talking with someone, you remember that yes, they are human and yes, they will feel things. So when you say things, you have to do it with, with a sensibility and with compassion for what they might react to. And I think we've all learned in a really stressful environment that we have to speak to each other kindly. We have to take in each other's views and be balanced with everything that we say and taking everything objectively. So that's what we learned as a cast, being in a really stressful situation and learning from each other. You know, for, for me, this event was the best teamwork in my life because it doesn't matter what, it, we have all uh, different interests, different some thoughts or uh, we, we can like something or dislike. And I think every one of us can find in each other some the similar or the same point or the same energy which uh, connected all of us and then we can work together for but because for me it's the best experience in my life how we can work together because it's really we have different languages different color of skin different interests or even religion and it doesn't matter because we are all the children of this earth and that's why we work together. Uh, I just, sorry. I just want to say the main thing for me, that what I've actually learned here is exactly what they're saying. But, you know, we don't have to love uh, everyone, of course, because we can't please everyone. But when you share a passion with someone, it's like you can't not be good to, to him or her. And we share two passions here. We share music, which is a huge passion we have. And of course, music brings everyone together. It's just a normal thing, a natural thing. And we share the passion for the planet and the earth. So when you share a passion with someone, you just have to, you, you don't have to love them. You just have to work with them. And it works because you're sharing your wishes and everything you like with them. So this is an awesome group and I just want to Say thank you, everyone, for being such a, a good group to work with. Because, you know, things are not easy, but with music and with passion, we do it. And it's fine. It's really, really fine. Hi, um, I've had instruction from David, but this is the last question. Um, just an observation, really, that was incredible. Um, there were tears on this row at one point during the performance. Uh, and tears from people who've seen and lived this musical for many, many years. So um, your passion was real, you know, you could feel it here. The question I've got stems from that, you know, would you come back in 10 years' time? Um, and I've got a bit of a vested interest. Um, but as well as coming back in 10 years' time, will you work with us, will you work with Green Cross, will you work with Peace Child over the next 10 years to, to realise some of the dreams that you have, um, not musical dreams, but the, 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 the message of the story, really? Will you do that? That's, that's a commitment I'm asking from you, I guess. I'd like to say something. I head back, I head back to Malaysia on Thursday, and we, um, my university, uh, with the director of Lim Kok Wang, is trying to bring this event back to Malaysia to see how we can unite the various youths over there, because there's so many races. There, there is a, the, the Iban, the Malay, the Indians, the Chinese, there's so many races.
race is Africans. A lot in even the metropolitan Kuala Lumpur city and also other states over there. We're praying and hoping that somehow that we can have this event and see how the various youths from around the world, from Denmark, from Canada, around the world, walk together with the youths back in Asia and see how we can unite together as one voice. Even I would say it would be awesome if the United Nations, when they have their Security Council meetings, they should have some music in there. You know, I think it's kind of boring. <laughs> Because this is the only way to unite ourselves in the world. Um, earlier, I was speaking with I was speaking with David Gordon um, yesterday, and we, we were really having a really good conversation. He said, and I, and I said to him, we should just come together every year and just do this musical in a different and a different city every year. And David Gordon, he looked at me like I opened up the heavens. He said, Yes, let's do this every single. Yeah. And so, yes, Cass, that's, that's my suggestion, I guess. Families that sing together stay together. And I think you guys sang pretty well together tonight. And I think you also told a hell of a story. And I thank you very, very much. David, of course, you deserve the last word, my friend. <laughs> I just want to thank you all. I think you're, you're absolutely marvelous. I mean, it's... It's you just awaken the whole dream again, basically, is what, what you've done here today. And uh, I just have this real, like you were saying, you know, I just want this to go on. And it should go on, because it can do so much good. There's so much more good can be done by what we have done here today. And maybe change the hearts of people here, which I'm sure we have. We have a beautiful world, you know. We really have a beautiful world, and we've got to look after it. And we've got to start to work at that. That's, what we're, that's our mission. And, you know, you're saying about this. We really, deep down, love each other. We love everybody. We fight. We fight. David and I fought over so many different things. But we love each other. We're together. We're here still together. We, we make it through. And I think we've got to go on. That's my message. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to get out of this room and cast. We meet, I think, at your campus, Route de Morillon, tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. We have a conversation with the uh, students who are here from the uh, International School of Geneva. So any of you who want to get up in the morning and come to that, ask Fatim where it is, and we'll meet in the lobby there at 10 o'clock, OK? Thank you, guys. Thank you, audience. You were fantastic. Thank you.